All right, everybody. Um, we're going to get started. Probably going to see some other people uh, trickle in. So if you hear me repeat myself in a few slides here, I'm just I uh, want to make sure that I get all the housekeeping right. So uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Troy Daniels. Um, we are um, also accompanied by Alan and by Simon from Victron Energy. Uh, they're going to be helping us out, talking a lot about some, some really great stuff here regarding mobile application, uh, applications using lithium batteries, and really how to make it work, uh, which is a big thing that, you know, we, we get a lot of requests. Um, and we're, you know, as the battery company, we have some suggestions, but, uh, you know, these guys from Victron are going to really be able to uh, bring it all together. Uh, Matthew also will be on uh, doing some, some talking here. Matthew is also part of the Simplify Power team. So a lot of hosts, a lot of people talking, uh, but should be a great presentation. A few housekeeping items, uh, questions, we're going to go over the very end. We're going to answer them live. So. If you go to the top of your page uh, and pull up that little black control bar there, there's a Q&A section. Type your questions right into that Q&A um, and we will start going through them at the end. So uh, feel free to type them in at any point and we will definitely get around to those questions. Slides will be sent out afterwards. Um, so we will send a follow up with some slides, some information regarding uh, Simplify and some contacts over at Victron so that if you need some you know, follow up, uh, maybe looking to do some projects, we're happy to help. Okay, let me just make sure. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and hop right in. Oh, sorry there. So I wanted to start uh, regarding Simplify Power and just kind of give a quick overview of what Simplify does and, and really kind of a rundown of our company. So kind of the easiest way to look at Simplify is this very, I hate to say motto, but it really is kind of a, a message here. Uh, what we do is safe, proven, and simple technology. So safe being non-toxic, non-hazardous uh, batteries, cobalt-free chemistry. So we actually are using lithium chemistry that is cobalt-free, which uh, basically means we have no risk of thermal runaway with fire propagation. We're going to talk a lot about how that really ties all together in this mobile application, um, which it is a huge advantage and really important when it comes to mobile applications. We are UL certified. You can see them there, 1642, 1973, and 9540A. Uh, UN DOT certified, 94, or 3480, and uh, 38.3. So, um, those are kind of the safety precautions that we put in place. And again, we'll be talking a lot about that and how it really relates to the mobile application stuff. Proven technology over a decade of experience and growth, deployed in over 40 countries, over 100 megawatt hours installed actually worldwide. Uh, and that number is always going up. It's always increasing. We've even been tested and validated by the US Army and Marine Corps. Uh, we'll actually talk a little bit about that later because that is actually a mobile application. So it kind of ties right into all of this. Um, and even to prove that our batteries are safe, we actually have special permission by the FAA to fly our batteries, unlike virtually all other lithium batteries, definitely on the, the residential scale style stuff. Simple technology, we really try to keep things simple, even as we advance our product lines into, you know, comms batteries now and, and more various kind of um, advancements within our own product line, we are always keeping it simple. And that's really our stride. Um, easy integration, optimizing generation sources of any kinds, maximizing resiliency and creating savings through, um, you know, levelized cost of energy, um, as well as looking at, you know, how do we use our batteries for things like time of use, peak load shaving, demand charges. Um, and we try to keep that as simple as possible. Okay. So like I kind of mentioned already, we are a lithium battery manufacturer, specifically lithium iron phosphate. So cobalt free chemistry. Um, and we actually manufacture our batteries with a cylindrical form factor. This is how kind of the base of all of our products and really how we um, accomplish even building up to larger scale stuff. This is a very brief kind of idea of where we're at globally. Um, so you can see here kind of some where the distributors might be, but we even have reach outside of our distribution network as well. So um, while we do supply distributors stocking, uh, we often can provide batteries in other parts of the world too. 
Okay, as far as product line goes, um, I'm going to keep it not, you know, not full product line here today uh, because, oops, sorry there, because we really aren't going to be talking about every product uh, as we're really trying to talk about mobile applications here. And we're also talking more about uh, integration with these Victron products. That being said, we're going to talk a lot about our standard 5 3.8 kilowatt hour battery coming in at 141 or 151 amp hours at 20 or 48 volts sorry, 24 volts, excuse me, and 75 amp hours at 48 volts. Um, so for this application, we're gonna talk a lot about the 24 volt most likely, but this battery does also come in 48 volt. It's simple, um, it's parallel connections only, but it's modular and scalable. So you can meet any energy power demand that the customer might require. It's super easy if you're using drop-in lead acid replacements, you know, the benefit being that it's smaller in size and we're actually gonna be talking about that. So I'll kind of hold on that a little bit. Uh, again, 24 volt, 48 volt options, integrated battery management system, and even integrated circuit breaker for protection and ease of installation. Some of the 12 volt products we're gonna be talking about. Now it is, this is 12 and 24, but I mentioned it 12, as a 12 volt product because it is, it is our main 12 volt product, our 1.4 kilowatt hour battery, 115 amp hours at 12 volts, and it does come in 57 amp hours and 24 volts. These are scalable as well, small and lightweight, 33 pounds. Um, they're great for mobile applications. Um, they're compatible with most standard charge controllers and inverters. They still have an integrated battery management system and they even have the option of Anderson connectors as you might see here or uh, bare wire connections. So they don't have battery leads, they actually have wires coming out which can be really useful in these applications. Other mobile products, just as a quick mention, uh, our portable power products, the Big Jenny, the Little Jenny, and even the Big Jenny with the power kit, the solar panel and all of it. Uh, these are, again, not probably what we're gonna be talking about mostly today, but we still utilize lithium iron phosphate in these products, and these often are used as portable power uh, or emergency power. And I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention it, uh, our new battery, um, is the Amplify battery. This is, um, I'll skip kind of the, 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 the meat right here, but just mentioning that this is our new battery that uh, has the ability for closed loop communications. Um, uh, it's actually currently only advanced uh, integration with the Solark, though we are looking towards other inverters, Victron definitely being one of them. So, you know, keep your eyes open uh, as we start to build up uh, new new inverters that this battery is compatible with, Victron will definitely be on the list of uh, battery or inverters that we pair with. So um, again, this is our newest battery, closed loop communication. Um, if you're kind of interested more in hearing about the new battery, I would check out my presentation I did on it recently uh, that kind of goes through the details. It's a lot to go over, so I'll keep it brief there. All right, on that note, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand over the controls to Alan from Victron. And Alan's going to walk us through um, a little bit regarding, oh, wait one second there. Let me see if I can, okay. Um, I just hand over the controls to Alan. He's going to talk a little bit about Victron Energy, the company and the products. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Alan Santos Bush, Victron Energy Sales Manager, North America. Uh, thank you for joining us today with Simplify. I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview of our company and our history and, and talk about our topology, our, our inverter topology, and then pass it over to Simon, my colleague, who's in Florida, sales manager. Well, it all started in 1975, so we're celebrating our 45th year in business. And the, Reinout Botter is the uh, founder, and his sons now run the company. Reinout is managing director and on the board. Um, he has a lot of input into today's production. He schedules the production in our facilities that are uh, global. So we've gone essentially from, you know, a small, tiny company in, uh, in Reinout's home to, in 45 years, a global company that has over a thousand products sold worldwide uh, in 60 different countries. So we're well known uh, outside of North America, now becoming very well known here in North America. So uh, our roots began, as you can see in this picture, in Marine. Uh, Reinout designed 
the first pure sign of wave inverter for the marine industry uh, to power electric items on their uh, on their vessels and of course in the inland waterways of the Netherlands. So the company's based in the Netherlands where we have three facilities, uh, two are major design facilities and one is general admin and, and, uh, and design. Uh, so uh, if you're ever over in the Netherlands, uh, please look us up. They'll be happy to show you around. Yeah, just wanted to, uh, oops, having trouble with this. There we go. Our dedicated solutions cover marine, which initially, but uh, off-grid and automotive, RVs, industrial, storage, uh, and telecom. Uh, we make uh, a, a whole wide range of products addressing 230 volt, 50 hertz, and 120 volt, 60 hertz. And frequency is switchable on our inverters and inverter chargers. So. Uh, they're very adaptable. Um, but again, you know, our autonomous energy supply uh, opportunities are, are great, even uh, today, even greater. We see a huge surge in, in RV and marine, especially, uh, which is similar to an off grid application. It's just the grounding is a, a little different. Uh, so we'll get into that through our presentation uh, today. Um, our products uh, are. Go, are ISO rate rated and uh, go through a quality uh, control facility, uh, very strict in, in many facilities that where we produce, mainly in um, uh, India, uh, Malaysia, uh, a few things in China, not much, but most of it uh, in the Far East. So we stock, we build the stock, our products. We rarely have product out of stock and uh, our customers enjoy, our direct customers enjoy an order portal where they can see in real time the inventory levels and price their pricing. Um, so they have real time uh, delivery and, and tracking constantly through this portal. Uh, we have many other portals also that you can look to for advice and, and uh, troubleshooting like Victron Community, uh, Victron Professional, and of course our regular website, Victron Energy. So the production uh, in outside of, of our facilities enables us to, to lower our prices and, and achieve high quality. We also have Victron remote management. So I think we're really far advanced in terms of the competition with monitoring and control of our systems. So uh, look to that for uh, support. It's free to use uh, the server in our Netherlands office and uh, and globally, we, we have many installations that are free to look at at VRM World, Victron Energy. So the third party warehouses will we'll keep in stock and distribute on demand, but again, we build the stock, not build the order. Our inverter charger line, uh, 120 volt, consists of the multi plus and the quattro inverter. The multi compact is a two, two kVA uh, compact inverter charger. It has a single in, single out. The multi plus goes from three kVA and 12 to 24 volts uh, DC. The quattros are larger. Uh, quattro is aptly named for two inputs and two outputs. Uh, so you have two separate 120 inputs and two separate outputs on with the quattro line. All have low frequency toroidal transformers, uh, great inductance or capacitance for inductive loads. Uh, surge is 100%. Um, these are all pure sine waves. So it's easy to know when you're specifying one of Victron's inverter chargers, they're all pure sine wave. They all have dual purpose. They have a neutral to ground uh, relay also, uh, which enables you to uh, put it in a, a mobile application. Um, so you, you know what an inverter charger does it will act as a, an internal AC transfer switch. Um, it has a powerful charger uh, when, when AC is connected, a grid or generator. Um, you can have uh, uh, power assist and power control. So you have uh, the charger backing off when loads come in. And with that, you can support a large load with a smaller AC source. Uh, that feature is 
in all of our inverter chargers. So multiple units can operate in parallel or in three phase and up to six per phase. So with a 10 kVA, you have quite a large system, up to 180 kVA at three phase. Uh, it's fully configurable via computer with an interface uh, and soon to have Bluetooth in all of our inverter chargers. So we'll make it a lot easier, but we're making things simpler as we go forward here. We, we try to harmonize and unify all these uh, products uh, and anticipate what's coming in the future and listen, of course, to our customers. Uh, the, a little bit on the neutral ground relay, because it's important when, in, when you have a mobile application that you have an inverter charger with this feature, um, you don't want to have multiple neutral ground bonds. So if you connect to a shore post, for example, or uh, you're at an RV camp and, you're, and you want to connect to their power, uh, there's going to be a neutral ground made in that uh, connection. So the uh, neutral ground relay will open if that's the case automatically. You can disable that function and, and use it as a standalone or a backup system in a, in a stationary application. So uh, you have the dual purpose uh, use of these inverter chargers. The MultiPlus has, uh, is, is our best selling unit. It's a 3 kVA at 24 volts and a 5 kVA um, at 120. Excuse me, the 5 kVA might be 230. The, the 3 kVA is 120. The 12 volt is 120. And these are both UL 458 for mobile and 1741 for standalone. We have a 48 volt Quattro uh, at 3 kVA, 5 kVA, and 10 kVA. These numbers in amperage here are the charging amps for these uh, devices that you see here underneath or next to the uh, 3000 VA, for instance. So the Quattro is similar, it's exactly the same, except it has two AC inputs at 120 separate and two AC outputs. They can have grid and generator connected at the same time or two generators. Uh, you can also have two multipluses, each with their own uh, generator in parallel. So there are many ways to, to combine our systems, but they have to be the exact same model when you're paralleling these units together for more power. Uh, some of the accessories that are involved, it, we, you, they're not required, but uh, of course, if you want to have uh, con remote control and monitoring, then you would need a hub like this color control on the far left. Uh, we have various hubs you can choose from. Some don't have a display, so they're less expensive. And then we have some that are very robust with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth tooth capability uh, to connect as a hub all our accessories. And then you can connect to the internet when you have Wi-Fi uh, connected. You can see and control your system from anywhere in the world. The digital multi-control panel can be added to the hub. And this gives you for remote uh, or for mobile applications, uh, a quick way to reference the post current and adjust up or down the AC input, depending on the size of the breaker, the output breaker from the post. So you can dial down or up the uh, AC input current uh, instantly to have that connectivity and not have any nuisance tripping. It's very convenient in mobile applications. Some people use this alone without the color display or a hub because they're not usually connecting to Wi-Fi, but you can. We do have a, a modem also that works with uh, the 3G and 4G networks, so you can have uh, constant connectivity to your system while you're moving. Uh, so this Bluetooth dongle is, is used with the inverter chargers only. Uh, they can enable the inverter charger to have substantial Bluetooth connectivity and programming ability so that you can connect with your smartphone. And uh, it also helps in commissioning. You can bring in the new uh, firmware a lot easier. It locates it and uploads it automatically. Well, that's it on Victron for now, but uh, my, my colleague Simon will discuss further solutions and diagrams, sizing considerations and so forth. Uh, Simon. All right, let me try to pass over the controls here. All right, hold on one second. All right, thank you, Alan. <laughs> You're welcome. I just changed the slide for you. 
There you go. You're in control. Um, let me see if... All right. So um, my name is Simon, and I'm the newest member to Victron here in the US. Uh, started about six months ago. Uh, and uh, well, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, charging uh, when you're uh, in a mobile application, predominantly uh, alternator charging with lithium batteries and uh, how to protect your alternator uh, in various uh, situations and uh, how to design a system so we can charge uh, with an alternator and a battery with a different voltage, uh, regulate the current and, uh, and so on. Um, the first and most simple one, we're gonna go through a couple of different uh, schematics and installations here. Uh, first one is a, a fairly straightforward one where we're using a, a battery charger and a standalone inverter uh, to power our loads um, with a battery monitor and a lithium battery. Uh, this is used for smaller application, can be a small, uh, small vehicle or where the load demands are not that great. Uh, so this one here is pretty straightforward uh, as far as commissioning a a system like this, we would have to dial in our battery monitor uh, according to Simplify's uh, uh, setup for, for their battery. And uh, we would also uh, set the set points for the inverter, uh, low voltage cutoff if we want to control that, and uh, charge parameters on the, uh, uh, on the battery charger. And all those are done uh, through your smartphone uh, as well. So Victron Connect is a very handy tool to control these products here. Let's see if I can move here. Um, seems like I'm stuck here. Click the screen. There we go. All right. So the next uh, option here, uh, when we're looking at a little bigger system, uh, would be to incorporate a solar panel, uh, a control panel, like Alan was talking about, one of our GX devices. Uh, in this case here is a color control. We also have a new servo uh, with a touch screen and a smaller inverted charger. Our smallest, like Alan said, is a 2kVA 80 amp uh, inverted charger uh, at 12 volts. We also have the same uh, 2kVA unit in 24 volts as well. Um, simply adding the MPPT to the system and programming that one as well to, uh, to simplify uh, settings. Uh, this is also done with Victron Connect. So a lot of our products are programmed directly on your phone to be incorporated with, uh, with uh, Simplify's batteries. Uh, in this system here, we've added a battery protect, which is right before the DC loads. So we're using this one to terminate uh, our DC loads prior to our power being terminated here. Uh, so this way here, we can uh, control our DC loads and uh, trigger this unit to uh, turn on and off based on uh, voltage. Uh, for example, uh, we can also control this through the battery monitor here, our uh, battery monitor that will be displaying state of charge, discharge current, so on and so forth, can uh, be programmed with the relay inputs on the back of it. It's got a common, normally closed, normally open circuit. So we can wire that in to the battery protect and turn off DC load on a specific state of charge if you'd want to do so. Uh, up here, we also have a GX GSM modem, and this is used to uh, broadcast all the information that we have on our color control to our VRM online portal so yet that you can monitor your system um, like you are in front of it from the other side of the world. So this would require a, well, a 3G or a 4G SIM card and a, a standard uh, cellular uh, connection. Uh, this can also be connected. The color control can be connected to Wi-Fi, either with a Ethernet cable or uh, uh, through Wi-Fi directly with a, uh, a Wi-Fi adapter in the back of it. And this way, we can keep an eye out on our uh, entire system uh, anywhere we're at. 
Uh, for larger systems, uh, we can use uh, uh, our quattros like Alan was talking about. So I'm not going to go in too, uh, too heavy on, on this one here. Uh, this can be uh, more so used for off-grid and uh, standby uh, situations here. Uh, a good tip is to always use a battery monitor um, for our systems. Uh, that way we're always uh, in good control of uh, state of charge and so on. A uh, high quality one is always preferred on this here. This here is more to where we're getting into the alternator and the vehicle mobility uh, charging situation. Uh, with a standard uh, starting battery, we can incorporate uh, a couple of different devices that we're going to go into later on to charge a secondary uh, lithium battery safely and provide it with a steady um, lithium charge curve on the output. Uh, that can be programmed as well as many of our other products with uh, Bluetooth for local, local monitoring and uh, uh, setup. So this one would be programmed the same way as our MPPT um, battery monitor, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, we have two different options here. We have a, an isolated version and a non-isolated version, uh, which is something that we're going to take a more specific look at in, in a little bit. So when charging lithium with an alternator, the main concern here is to uh, protect the alternator. Uh, a lithium battery is basically a black hole to the alternator. Uh, there's very little internal resistance. So when we're starting the alternator, that lithium battery will take everything that that alternator will uh, produce. Um, and that causes many alternators to run very hot and prematurely fail. Sometimes it can be very instantaneously, uh, especially when we're idling. Um, the fan inside of a standard alternator is a direct relation between the RPM of the engine and uh, uh, so if we're running the engine at uh, lower RPM or idling it, then uh, the fan there is not going to be able to cool off this alternator and most of them do not have any way of self-regulating themselves, causing them to not be able to handle all this heat here. Uh, so we want to protect the alternator. Um, so the, there's a couple of different products that we can use for this if we're using a simplified battery to power our uh, house loads, uh, so to speak. Uh, we also want to provide a good charge current and to the lithium battery. A lithium battery is an expensive investment, so we want to make sure that we're treating it as good as possible. Uh, so we want to control the charging sources here and uh, using a uh, a DC to DC charger or, or battery combiner of, of some sort it will help us protect that investment for, to make it last as long as possible. Uh, and then we want to try to use as much as possible from the alternator within a safe uh, uh, number to not burn it up. Uh, there is a video that you'll be able to look at where we've done several tests on alternators charging lithium batteries with different RPMs and uh, speeds, uh, output currents, so on and so forth, and the difference between AGM and, uh, and lithium. So when you receive this um, presentation in the end, uh, I would recommend that you click on this link here and take a look at this video. Uh, so a couple of rules to adhere when using a standard alternator. Um, if our alternator is equal or smaller than our lithium battery, then we want to make sure that we're incorporating something to limit the current. That's a good rule of thumb to, uh, to keep in the back of your head. If you're using a 200 amp hour lithium battery and a 100 amp hour alternator, we want to put something in between there to uh, make sure that the alternator is not overheating. Uh, if the battery is much, much smaller than the alternator rated output, then we can generally just use a, uh, a battery combiner or, or a non-regulating uh, combiner uh, to charge that battery with. Um, there's three different units here. We have uh, a smart Orion, uh, Buck Boost, 
and a standard DC to DC converter uh, to use for uh, systems, especially when we have either a voltage increase, we have a 12 volt alternator and we wanna charge a 24 volt uh, house system or the other way around. Um, or if your our, uh, alternator is much smaller than the size of the uh, lithium bank, uh, then we can program the output of this uh, buck boost. Uh, this one comes in 25 amp, 50 amp, and 100 amp output. So we would pick one that would fit the uh, size of the alternator. Uh, generally about half of the size of the alternator, 120 amp uh, uh, alternator, we would wanna try to have a lower output than 60 amps to, to safely uh, charge our lithium bank and not worry about the uh, the alternator. So that's a, a good number to keep in mind. Um, this unit's got a one stage output. So we will program that output uh, according to uh, Simplify's uh, recommendation uh, for charging uh, algorithm. And uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll have an input voltage uh, uh, lockout. So we will only run the end, uh, the buck boost or DC, DC converter here when uh, the engine is running. So those are all programmable in, in this unit. And uh, yeah, that's the bulk of it. Uh, this one will also take in consideration temperature uh, as well as many other uh, uh, features of, of this one here. Uh, the second one is our newest uh, Orion uh, DC to DC charger. This one comes in 12 to 12, 12 to 24, 24 to 12, and 24 to 24. Uh, so you would pick the first number being this, um, the voltage of your uh, starting battery and alternator. And the second one would be the voltage of your uh, house battery. And then we would size the, uh, the system accordingly. So we can parallel uh, many of these, uh, limited amount uh, of these guys can be paralleled. Um, so we can reach the size of the you know, output current that we uh, wanna achieve here. If we have a really large alternator, then we can uh, combine two, three, four, uh, or so on uh, to utilize the alternator as much as possible. Um, they can be programmed in, in the app and you see the screenshots here are a couple of uh, screenshots from uh, the app from this Orion here. So we can set the uh, the charge parameters in uh, in this app. So we would program absorption voltage, uh, float voltage, uh, so on and so forth. And um, we would also use a, a lockout so we can set the uh, engine uh, detection. So this is can be very handy if we, use, we have a smart uh, alternator where it backs off on the voltage and some of the alternators are only putting out 13.2, you know, low 13 volts uh, uh, when they're up and running. And at that point, a regular uh, battery combiner will turn off at that point of time because the input voltage is too low. Uh, but we can program this one to still catch that and, uh, and boost that output voltage to charge this battery up to 14 to 14.4 um, and so on so that the charge curve on the output is always intact. Um, so this is a little bit on how this would be uh, wired in. There's a non-isolated and an isolated version of the uh, DC to DC chargers. If we're using a common uh, ground in the system, then a non-isolated unit would be fine, uh, such as the buck boost or a non-isolated uh, DC to DC charger where they have a combined ground connection. Um, if we have um, separate um, grounds in the system, uh, then at that point, uh, the isolated one would be the preferred option. Uh, generally, in a mobile application, the uh, non-isolated uh, version will be uh, the most cost-effective option here. So, uh, and here's just another example on how we can boost voltage from a variety of different alternators uh, or uh, drop it down, a 24-volt alternator to charge a 12-volt uh, uh, a service battery. 
we can also use this RAN DC to DC charger to program it as a power supply if we have a dedicated 12 or 24 volt load and uh, tailor the output voltage in the app. Um, so that's another functionality of this, or we can use it in between uh, batteries, not only alternators. So if you have two house batteries for a boat where you have a, a thruster battery and a, a service battery, then we can uh, use the charger in between there. And that can be handy if you have a big uh, solar array on your house battery. And then when the battery comes up full, then we want to trigger the, uh, the charger to start charging the, the other battery back or, or, or similar. So uh, that's a bit on uh, what to think about when we're looking at uh, charging lithium batteries off of uh, an alternator. Uh, we're not gonna look at some uh, uh, well, ins and out when we're designing a, a full system. Uh, so the first thing is to sit down and, and just talk with the, the customer. We, uh, sizing a new system? Uh, are we modifying an existing one? How do we adhere to, to that? What kind of power consumption are we looking at? Do the customer need uh, monitoring? Uh, so on and so forth. The more information we have in the beginning, the better we're off. So the main uh, things that we need to look at is our, what kind of AC input is available? Do we have uh, grid shore power uh, generators? Uh, how often are we using this, uh, so on. Uh, load, load sizes and peak ratings, uh, important for the size of the uh, inverter. Uh, what kind of DC charging sources are we uh, using here and how often? And uh, how long do we want the battery to last, especially if there's no uh, charging sources to it? Uh, so the first thing that we're uh, looking at is the inverter. That would be the first thing that we would uh, design in the system uh, in best case scenario. Um, so the, the way that we're doing this is uh, calculating in watts and we're determining the load that we need this inverter to, uh, to power and uh, make sure that the battery can sustain this and the inverter is uh, large enough to, to do so. And uh, we're looking at how long these loads are going to uh, be uh, used for. Uh, this will determine the uh, inverter size. So the first size that we're looking at here is the peak power. This needs to be within the uh, range of this. Like Alan was saying, our peak is twice the rated uh, output on this for a very short period of time. Uh, we can hold 130 percent of the output for 30 minutes uh, on the inverted chargers and then continuously depending on the temperature uh, can go up and down a little bit. Um, so that would be the first thing we would uh, look at and we want to make sure that our uh, uh, continuous load is within uh, the operations of the of the inverter here. Uh, we can incorporate a generator to increase our uh, capacity on the AC output so they can work in conjunction with each other. So if we're using a generator, we can have that one to bridge the gap of using a smaller inverter uh, and a smaller generator to power a larger load if we can run them both uh, at the same time. But if it needs to be powered off of the inverter uh, only, then we need to both look at the con uh, continuous load and the uh, peak power. Uh, the best thing we can do is try to use as small as possible inverter uh, because the efficiency of a smaller inverter is uh, is higher than a large one. The standby consumption on a on a large inverter uh, charger is a lot higher, and because uh, it requires more power to stay on, to keep the uh, you know to energize the transformer to keep the circuit board uh, on. So yeah, try to get the inverter as small as possible with, uh, within the realm of you know, covering the peaks and the uh, continuous lows, of course. The second one is to look at what kind of AC inputs we have. Uh, so this will determine um, how fast we can utilize the charger aspect of this to charge up our battery. Uh, we want to try to charge our battery as fast as possible. Uh, so 
Um, uh, that would be the second thing that we would uh, take a look at. Um, and then the last uh, thing to consider here, uh, mobile applications are generally 12 and 24 volt systems. Um, we're seeing some requests for 48 volt systems now as well, but there's a little bit more uh, obstacles uh, with incorporating alternators at that point of time. There's uh, you know, they need a, a special alternator uh, and a couple more steps to, to get into the 48 volt. Um, so the first thing is to uh, look at the alternator. Uh, if we are using a 12 volt alternator and then we have to charge a 24 volt system, well then we would have to use one of uh, of the boost DC to DC uh, chargers or the, the buck boost as, as an option here. So that would be, uh, we'd have to look at the cost and, and that. Using a 24 volt system over a 12 volt system is marginally more uh, effective for the inverter. Uh, it's a couple of percent higher efficiency going from 12 volt to 120 versus 24 volt to, uh, to 120. Uh, the bigger, differences in few sizes as we're doubling our voltage, we're uh, cutting our uh, current in half. And, and so the few sizes and the cable sizes goes down accordingly. Uh, so that can be a good uh, well, money saver in, in the system there as well. Uh, the cost of the MPPT will also decrease for its same system as a 12 volt system uh, with the same um, PV array as uh, all our MPPTs can uh, be programmed either to 12 or 24, and the larger ones can do 48 volt as well. So uh, 75, 15, uh, uh, let's say 15 amp uh, MPPT can put out 15 amp at either 12 or 24 volts. So it's twice as powerful at 24 volts. The drawback with that is that our panel voltage needs to be higher, we need five volts above our um, battery voltage for the MPPT to start uh, charging the battery. So if we have a 24 volt uh, battery bank, we're sitting at around 25, 26 volt, then we need to have uh, a PV voltage of uh, well, higher than 30 volts for this MPPT to even start. Uh, and especially on mobile application, you can be restricted on space when it comes to solar panels. So this is something to make sure that you're able to get up the, uh, the PV voltage on this one here. Uh, and the last thing would be DC loads. If we're using 12 volt loads, then we would uh, have to use a DC to DC converter for that as well. Uh, generally a 24 volt system is going to be more uh, cost effective, uh, but it, there's a, a couple of different things that can play a factor into, into this here. So I think that was uh, the bulk of it and we'll cover some questions in the end here as well uh, about this. Awesome, thanks Simon for all that awesome info about Victron's products and especially charging of lithium batteries. So I want to talk a little bit here about why simplified batteries are a great option for mobile applications. First off is their high energy density, which in a small space, it's really important to maximize how much energy you can fit in every cubic inch. Additionally, their high power availability. This is going to let you power uh, greater demand with a smaller battery bank. And I know this is really important with a lot of RVs and vans. They have everything super efficient, very low power, but just a couple of high power demand devices. So something like a saw or a toaster or microwave might be a large power demand. It's really gonna be helpful to have that high power avail availability. Additionally, charging quickly and easily using a C over two max charge current. So C over two just means that you can fully charge the battery in as little as two hours with the right charging source. So for example, with our 3.8 kilowatt hour battery, you could charge it in at a rate of 1.9 kilowatts. And that does scale up as you add more battery capacity. It's gonna be really helpful for like Simon mentioned, maximizing PV production and 
quickly recharging. If you want to stop quickly and charge from the grid along a, a long stretch of a trip, but you don't want to stop for too long, it's going to be helpful there. Additionally, cutting down on diesel and gas consumption if you're running a generator to charge those batteries. That's super important, not only environmentally, but also cost-wise. And of course, as Simon mentioned, it's going to be additionally really important to charge quickly using your alternator. Of course, using the correctly sized combiner or charger, but making sure that let's say you're stopped at a gas station, just idling your engine just to charge your batteries, um, maybe before you go to sleep for the night. It's really important to be able to charge them as quickly as possible. So that's where that C over two rate really comes in handy. To compare simplify batteries to lead acid batteries, uh, first advantage is that there's no maintenance with five batteries, as opposed to having to check the water levels and water your lead acid batteries. Additionally, if they're in a you know tucked away tight space, this is going to give you a big advantage. Oops, there's uh, no toxic chemicals in five batteries and no ventilation requirements. So also very important, as we recently got a call from a homeowner who his lead acid batteries had been off gassing, nearly caused his house to explode. Now it's important no matter where you are to make sure your batteries are safe, but especially important in such a small space where you're living so close to your batteries. There's no risk of thermal runaway with five batteries, as opposed to several other chemistries on the market. There's no risk of, or there's no loss of efficiency really, um, no significant loss within the operating range of five batteries, as opposed to lead acid batteries, which can lose a really significant portion of their capacity at lower temperatures. And additionally, lithium iron phosphate batteries have a longer cycle life. We offer a 10 year warrantied lifespan. And even at the end of that warrantied life, your batteries are guaranteed to have 80% of their initial capacity still remaining. So you're truly going to get more than those 10 years. And this is huge because if you're like me, you really don't enjoy uh, doing crazy yoga positions when you're doing mobile installs. So you'll be able to spend less time doing that. Additionally, I'm uh, going to run through this awesome tool we have on our website to compare the levelized cost of energy storage between our batteries and let's say a le um, maybe an AGM battery that you have in mind or a flooded lead acid. I'm gonna compare it to our 3.8. I uh, recently saw a quote for this amount when I Googled our battery. I'm gonna use 80% depth of discharge as that's gonna give you the longest lifespan of the battery. Awesome, so about nine cents per kilowatt hour of throughput. So now I'm gonna compare to lead acid batteries. I know I talked a lot about flooded lead acid. I'm just gonna use a sealed lead acid because I have it on the top of my head. I recently purchased one. So as you can see, I'm gonna I'm going to try 40% depth of discharge and simplify comes out three over three times as cost effective. So back to the presentation. One more tool I want to show you is uh, our replacement guide for replacing lead acid battery banks. Um, it's going to run you through the size of the battery system you need. So can just enter all your info in there about how many lead acid batteries, the voltage rating and amp hour rating, and it'll tell you exactly how many five batteries you need to substitute for those. Uh, additionally, we have an awesome replacement guide, really well written and detailed. So if you need um, anything beyond this, just feel free to call us, you know, or email us and we'd be happy to assist you in reprogramming those set points, making sure your system's set up perfectly. And of course, when we talk about simplified batteries, we also want to compare to other lithium chemistries and even other LFP manufacturers. 
Um, what's special about us is that we have over a decade of proven technology experience. Our batteries are now outliving their warranty. Our roots started in mobile applications with Hollywood power packs used by filmmakers and US Army and Marine Corps projects which have shown our batteries can endure extreme wear and tear and vibration. So these projects have given us some validation and backing. Our products are perfect because you can flexibly size a system to meet the energy and power needs of any system. And this can be scaled really easily. So this is gonna be a big advantage because if you're looking into a single unit that has a 14 kilowatt hour um, energy storage option, and that's their smallest building block, you're gonna end up paying for way more than you need. With our building blocks are a bit smaller, 3.8 kilowatt hours and even much smaller. Um, so you can really meet the size of any system demand. And additionally, I know that the smaller kind of all-in-one units are becoming increasingly pop popular for mobile applications. And I personally never recommend these as they're all-in-one and all the components are in one unit. There's no interchangeable parts. So if one component is fried, they're all useless. Additionally, our batteries are really easy to install and integrate with other products. This makes them perfect for DIY projects like building a van or a camper, um, especially because of the built-in breaker. I've seen way too many batteries be short-circuited uh, and even seen fire start from that happening during installation as you're using a socket wrench and just end up connecting and short-circuiting the battery with that socket wrench. So the built-in breaker is gonna be able to help you prevent that. Just keep the breaker in the off position until you're done installing. Additionally, we've got really well-written, detailed, and thorough integration guides for all of our um, most popular products that we integrate with. So if you're not sure what settings to use on your inverter, first just check out those integration guides. And if that doesn't do it for you, just give us a call. We pick up the phone and we'd be happy to help you over email or phone. Lastly, but not least, our distribution network that helps us keep low prices and lead times. So similar to what Alan said, we manufacture to stock. We don't, don't manufacture to order. Um, this helps you know, contacting a distributor as opposed to us is gonna help you get the best price and get the product in the shortest amount of time. So if you're like me and you're a last minute planner, you're still gonna be able to get your product done in a good amount of time. And I'll hand it over to Troy. All right, thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and just switch over the controls. All right, so I just wanted to very briefly, uh, I just got a few slides here um, related to some use cases that we've seen. This is definitely not all of them by any means. There's so many mobile use cases that I'm sure I missed going through our stuff, but these are just some ones I, I thought were cool uh, and kind of highlight some various uh, use cases. So, tiny home, um, this is a great one here. You can actually see with the Victron and the Simplify here in the cabinet, um, I guess you could argue maybe mo in between mobile and not mobile, but in this case, you know, this was a mobile tiny home, uh, meaning it was moved on site um, and, and was able to move. But Trailer RV, I know we talked a lot about this, uh, definitely as far as RV stuff, um, you know, this is a huge, still a huge application as well. Camper van, uh, I know our, our, our good colleague Matt here you just heard from uh, has his own camper van here. Big, big use case when it comes to um, mobile energy storage. And even mobile businesses, uh, we've got, you know, this is one of a lot of many that we have um, that I've seen around of, of, you know, a coffee shop or even just a food cart that is mobile um, using our batteries. I think this really makes a lot of sense. I'll say one thing, if a lot of these mobile businesses deal with food um, and you really wanna make sure that you're dealing with non-toxic elements. Um, so the lithium iron phosphate Simplify battery makes a ton of sense in this situation um, as it is non-toxic and non-hazardous. 
So again, those were just a few um, use cases. I want to go ahead, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the Q&A here. Um, if you have questions or if you weren't on the present or on the uh, joining us in the presentation this earlier, uh, if you have questions, go up to your black control bar there, hit Q&A, go ahead and type them in. Um, we will start answering these questions. I see a few people raising your hands. Um, again, just go ahead and type those into the Q&A um, as we, are, we, we can't uh, unmute people during the presentation. So um, I'll start out, let's see what we have here. I think a lot of these questions are probably uh, related to Victron and, and Simon's portion. So we'll, we'll jump right in. Um, so uh, actually this one's for us. Does Simplify offer heated cabinet solutions for um, outboard batteries given the LFP tends to not charge below freezing? As far as heated cabinets go, we don't necessarily have a cabinet that's heated. We do have a hot start solution. Um, and I would even look into our newest battery that should have some more temperature um, protection built into it. But uh, heating pad options are always pretty easy to go with. Um, what warranty does Simplify provide for mobile applications? Uh, same exact warranty, actually. There, there really is no difference um, as far as the warranty goes. All right, let's see here. Um, all right, it looks like I, I was, I will take it back. It looks like I, most of the questions are related to the battery. So let's, let's keep popping through these. But everyone, if you've got questions, please just keep typing them in. Um, and we'll, we'll get through them all. Uh, so grounding, sharing, and switch neutrals. Simon definitely went over that. Um, so thanks for the, thanks for the, question there but yeah I know I, well I, I don't know how much I <laughs> cover that specifically there can be a, a bit of a difference in between uh, well marine uh, off-grid and uh, well RVs on on this here so uh, yeah I don't think that's really part of the presentation that I had uh, arranged here maybe uh, if we have a specific question about it, I think it would be best to send an email on it uh, so we can stay within the topics that we were planning on talking yeah. here. Simon, and, uh, yeah. Simon, sorry to interrupt, it, but yeah, I think um, you know, there was a mention of a tiny home, you know, that, that is mobile. Obviously, it was brought into a site and then parked. Um, yeah. you, know, you have these quasi uh, installations, but you know, there really is no difference. A tiny home is a mobile a registered, um, you know, property, and um, it it is likely to have uh, shore power or power from a grid. If they're off grid, um, you would disable your neutral to ground uh, switch in, in VE configure for the inverter charger. Um, you know, in the in the mobile setting that you're moving constantly, like an RV or a, a yacht you are going to have different um, electrical opportunities to connect to. You know, you might have a different uh, input, AC input current, um, and you would enable your, leave enabled your neutral ground switching because that bond will be released from the, from the chassis of the vehicle or, or the yacht and, uh, and then connect with the shore. You can't, the, the lesson is you cannot have multiple neutral ground bonds but you, you need one made at all times uh, for the neutral to ground on the input and the output. And, um, and, and of course the negative uh, DC uh, ground bond has to be made to the chassis. Yeah, hey, and Alan, while you're on that uh, question just came in, might as well address it now is, uh, the question is what, what is shore power for those not familiar with it? What is shore power? Well, it's, it's just an expression uh, mostly in marine world but it is also a shore post or a post where there's electrical service. You, you, you drive into a campsite, you may request that and have your RV plugged in. Um, many people do dry camping, which means they're not going to plug into any uh, grid or, or uh, you know, offshore generator or out of the vessel or RV generator. So, then you would need, uh, you know, the neutral ground doesn't matter. You're, you've made the bond automatically in the in the uh, vehicle itself. So shore, 
Shore power just means when you're connect in a mobile device and you're connecting to a uh, grid uh, source of AC, and that you know that it, that bond, that GFCI that you're plugging into, that neutral ground is made there at that post, like it is in your main uh, breaker panel at home. That that you always have that bond made at one place and only one place. Yep. Perfect. Um, okay, so a few more battery questions here. What is the maximum elevation where the batteries can operate? Um, there really, we don't have that specific data for max. I can say one thing, if you're comparing to a high voltage lithium battery, such as your, your LG Chem or um, even the older power walls, those ones, you know, if it's a high voltage battery, it's gonna have a lot more chance of arcing um, when it's at these high altitudes. And oftentimes the warranty will reflect that. We are able to operate at a lot higher altitudes without issue. Um, I will just tell you, you know, personally, the highest I think I know of is somewhere around like 12 or 13,000 feet. So if you have something higher than that, definitely want us to know. Um, how do you compare your 24 volt batteries to the Tesla Powerwall? Uh, well, tough question. Um, I would say longevity wise, you know, our batteries are gonna last longer. Uh, so really LCOE wise, you're gonna get more out of your battery, even though maybe the cost might be uh, a little bit less expensive for the power wall up front. Um, you know, we can combine. I think Matt kind of mentioned, you know, that's an all-in-one product. Um, it's really not going to make a lot of sense for these mobile applications. I don't actually even think it's rated uh, warranty for mobile application. I don't think they have neutral to ground switching. I don't, I don't think so either. I really yeah. don't think that they warranty for anything. Uh, I don't even think they warranty off grid too much still with, without monitoring set up. So um, I would tread lightly on using power walls outside of the residential stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to answer these two and then there's a question from Victron here. Uh, Missed the earlier por portion, will you be sending the recording link? Yep, we'll send it out uh, as a follow up. And then when, why do you left the battery center in Australia, the test center? Are you thinking of coming back? Not sure what, what test center you're talking about there. Um, but maybe shoot me an email. I'm happy to look into to whatever that may be. Um, I did unfortunately miss the Smart Energy Conference this year uh, that I went to last year as travel is a little bit uh, closed off for the company currently. Okay, I think this one's for Victron here. If there is solar attached to the input voltage for the DC to DC charger, how can the installer control when the charger turns on? Um, well, um, solar looks like this would be where you would use an MPPT if I'm not misreading this here. Uh, PV would go to an MPPT, that one will take care of all this and then that will go to the battery and then if you have a DC to DC charger or power supply that would be connected to your uh, positive and negative bus bar at that point of time. Uh, so the, the DC to DC would be connected to the battery and not to the solar, uh, if that makes sense. I think that's yeah. the question. I think also maybe they're touching on AC coupling. We, we are bi-directional, our topology, so we can have AC, excuse me, a PV inverter connected on the output of our inverter chargers. It, it will synchronize and harmonize. Um, uh, we do have installations where it's a special setting. It's not available in North America. I mean, you could do it, but it'd be illegal because uh, we're not certified yet. But elsewhere in the world, we can connect a PV inverter on the input of our inverter chargers and the output. So you have, um, you know, it depends on the application. It wouldn't be for mobile. So uh, I think that's the, uh, the drive here is, is focusing on mobile applications. So I, I wouldn't recommend connecting any PV inverter on the input of our inverter charger in a mobile application because you need the grid as a, uh, a reference. I hope yep. that answers the question. Awesome. Um, prices for batteries and probably uh, prices on inverters we're asking. Well, definitely, you know, I, I think Victor I can speak to, we sell through distribution partners. So uh, if you're looking for prices, go ahead and I definitely for us, you know, reach out to our sales line. Um, shoot back an email in the follow-up. We'll get you set up with a distributor. Happy to help. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is a tough one, so I'll do my best here. Is your battery case uh, electrically conductive? So basically the question is coming down to, and if so, does your battery have 
a grounding lug. Um, so can it be bonded to all your other grounds and the negative bus bar in your mobile application? So it does not have a grounding lug. Uh, it is not conductive, the case. So really just the negative going to that, that negative connection. Um, uh, so I know that question comes up a lot and it might be changing with our new battery case. I still don't have that info just yet, but I can just say we do not have a grounding lug that's required. Um, good question. Are you going to do a whole house webinar? We would be interested in learning more about using Victron in that application as well as Simplify. Well, I know we have tons of webinars all over the place on our YouTube channel. Um, and I know Victron probably has a lot of recordings as well. Um, I would say if you're interested in a whole home situation or, or you know, off-grid situation or whatever it may be, shoot us, you know, shoot Victron an email, whoever uh, you want to touch base with um, back from the uh, follow-up email that's sent out. And I'm sure we're always happy to help. Yeah. Yeah, I and just, uh, yeah, go ahead, Simon. Yeah, yeah, and just to touch on that because that's an interesting topic. Uh, as Alan mentioned, uh, we do not have a forty-eight volt unit with the UL seventeen forty-one SA um, and grid interactive approval yet. But this is something that's in production and uh, should be here sometime next year. So when we have that one in stock, I think that type of webinar would be very interesting. Yeah, I agree. And, and Simon, um, that, that is in further development, uh, will be like all the other inverter chargers mm -hmm. used in mobile. You know, the, the, the topology is the yeah. same across the whole range of our inverter chargers and inverters. So, you know, you can have that dual purpose use. Um, I would also point out if you want to contact Victron Energy, please use Sales USA Canada at VictronEnergy.com. That's SalesUSA Canada at VictronEnergy.com. And all of us here in North America monitor that inbox to answer uh, and direct questions you know, to the right person. Um, uh, if you have anything. Yeah, I have a couple more questions here that I'd like to bring up if we have a couple more minutes. Do we have yeah. a couple more minutes? Oh, yeah. um, there is a couple of one here in, in the answered column that I may just want to further explain a little bit. Uh, James had one where his RV alternator is putting out a 14.4 volt output and uh, uh, he wants to try to keep his max uh, bulk or absorption voltage to 14 volts. So this is where we would use the DC to DC uh, uh, smart Orion converter and then we would program it to only put out 14 volts. So it, it's got a wide input voltage. So at that point, it would uh, lower the output voltage down to 14 volts, even if the input is, uh, well, 14.4. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had one more. And Simon, yeah. I'll, I'll just add on that, to what you're saying, uh, the Victron Connect app is free to download on Apple or Android and uh, you yes. can practice. There's demo page, a demo device page you can, look at our different devices, many of them, including the smart Orion. That's why it's called smart. Anything smart is Bluetooth enabled. So you connect with your phone and you program it and you're done. It's very easy to set up. Yeah. Um, another one was intelligent alternator. Um, yes, there's a, a, a good amount of alternators out in the market now where they will charge up to your starting battery up to well, 14 something volts and then it will start to throttle back its output voltage can go down to 13 uh, low 13 volts um, at that point your battery combiner or standard uh, well uh, combining relay uh, would disengage it because you might not believe that the alternator is running and if it did it would only put out that uh, low voltage. So that's when the buck boost or the DC to DC Orion can be handy because it will take that lower output voltage and still maintain a stable charge curve on your uh, lithium battery. Uh, so it will boost it up to your uh, set values on, on that. So yeah, certain alternators, they'll uh, lower their output voltage when they're running uh, as sort of an idle and uh, that can be difficult to manage with a straight uh, combiner relay. So that's why we have uh, the buck boost or the DC to DC to yeah. compensate for that. And then we will program the input voltage um, to 
grab a hold of that incoming current uh, at that lower voltage. So we would set, let's say, the engine detection running um, to 13 volts. So we're we're taking that. So if we're lower than 13 volts, we will stop uh, boosting the voltage and charging the the lithium battery. So uh, when the alternator is not running, we're not discharging our starting battery. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, I would uh, also say that DC to DC converters can be used in, in applications where you have long DC runs and uh, you know, you're gonna have voltage drop when you have, you know, when you're, I guess, supplying power to a very long RV or a yacht, you wanna increase the, keep the voltage steady. The DC to DC converter will do that uh, for the whole uh, run. Also, yeah, and if you have a voltage drop, um, for a very you know long run um, that you can't work around in any way, uh, you can also take your voltmeter and measure the you know the true output uh, voltage there, and then you can see if you can uh, increase the the voltage on the DC to DC to match what you want to see on the on the battery as well. Would you have that issue? Awesome. Um, at one last one right here, and it was asking about the ignition feed input is forced to turn on when the engine is running. Uh, yeah, so that's the engine detection that we have that we, you would program the, the turn on and turn off uh, voltages, so to speak. So you can set that to well, 13 something volts and uh, shut it off at that point of time. And uh, there's also a remote input that can be wired, hardwired into uh, uh, engine switch, a uh, key um, switch, so to speak. Uh, where you can close that loop with the key and uh, so turn the um, DC to DC or the buck boost on as well. So that's also an option. Awesome. And, yeah, and the buck boost have a vibration sensor. So when it's shaking a little bit, it'll well, turn on. Something's happening. Yeah. Plus uh, voltage, it needs to see the vibration plus voltage. Got it. There's uh, one more question I think that would be good to answer live here. It's a question that just came through. Do the smart units have the temperature, have temperature sensors to protect the alternator if temps are too high? Um, the, uh, let's see, the buck boost would have that. Um, the DC to DC chargers would not have that. And that's why it's important to make sure that you're sizing it correctly. So you don't have this, uh, this issue. That's why um, less than half of its rated output is a good rule of thumb uh, to uh, look at here. So, uh, but it would not throttle back if, uh, if the alternator is getting hot. So if the alternator is getting hot at that point of time, uh, I, it would be presumed that we are using it too big of a DC to DC converter and we should consider going smaller on that to keep it uh, uh, cool, yeah. so to speak. Awesome. Yeah, I think you covered that really well. In that. Yeah, and we had one question about the uh, MPPTs as well and charging uh, off of a solar panel when it, uh, when it gets cold. Um, we have a built-in uh, temp sensor inside of the MPPT and we can use that to terminate the charge output from a, uh, a solar panel if that internal uh, temp sensor reaches a certain set po points. Uh, if this, let's say the battery and the internal temp sensor of the MPPT does not correlate, uh, we have a temp sensor uh, option and we can build something that's called a smart network. And we can do that with the battery monitor and a temp sensor or with a, this individual temp sensor. And then we can transmit the data to the MPPT to turn it off at the, uh, you know, the battery temperature at that point of time, if we need more precise reading on on the battery, the internal one is not uh, good enough. So that's something called a smart battery uh, network. It can be good to look up if you want to uh, terminate your charge based on temperature. And then the internal one is not good enough option. Looks like we got some more questions coming in. I'll, I'll address this battery one real quick. Um, how many series cells do you use in the 48 volt? Uh, so that'd be 16, 16S. Um, and then uh, I saw one about distribution in Canada. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and just reach out. I think Matt might have answered that one. Uh, and if you haven't, Matt, just go ahead and write back on that one to give, give the info of maybe, maybe one of our uh, sales reps. Yeah, okay. I provided the link of our where to buy page. So wherever you are, you can find a distributor near you. 
Um, awesome. Yeah. Some good questions here coming back. Uh, can the DC to DC charging handle vibration during off road? Yes. Um, <laughs> Specialized. <laughs> yeah, I don't have um, a specific rating for this, but it's one of the uh, main markets, uh, so to speak, for us is uh, uh, mobile power. Many of them are off-road, off-grid, uh, bumpy roads, and they're very popular in, in Jeeps and, and such, where we're limiting the current taken from the alternator to charge a smaller battery. Um, uh, so yes, they can handle that safely. I know you kind of address this related to, I think it was temperature, but going back to the buck boost, this question is what, what stops the charging when you're using the DC to DC buck boost? What um, makes the charging stop, say, if you were charging a 1.4 12 volt battery from the alternator? Yeah, and that's a good question because the buck boost in comparison to the uh, Orion DC to DC does not have a, a three-step output when you can program the well the absorption and, and it would go into float like a normal charger so to speak uh, and since it's got a, a straight one line output uh, the, it would be the you know the main advantage when using the DC to DC charger in, in that aspect what we can do is either um, set the output voltage around float voltage and at that point this is not a problem because when the battery is full it's not going to accept any more uh, power and you know the alternator in that case will start backing off its output through uh, through that channel there's other ways to do this we can set it to the fully charged voltage and then we can um, uh, tie in a a battery monitor, for example, and uh, disengage it when the state of charge is uh, full or when we reach uh, the battery voltages up to, well, let's say, 14 volts. Uh, there's a couple of tricks around it that we can use this for. I uh, would uh, generally say that the Orion would be the more cost effective and, uh, and easier to work with option between the two of them, but the buck boost can have several advantages, especially in really large system uh, where you can uh, use it for 100 amp um, at 24 volts. Um, so yes, if you have a, a really large alternator, uh, then that would be a time when we would start looking into the two of them. But if it's a smaller alternator, then generally the uh, Orion DC to DC will be the better option. And this is one of the reasons there. So that's a good question. So the DC to DC Orion, the smart one, has a three-stage charging algorithm. Yes, and you can program uh, the absorption voltage, the float voltage, and uh, you can set it to a fixed charge curve um, instead of uh, an adaptive one that we can use for um, AGM. So we can fix the absorption time frame uh, for it. So we can cap it at well 30 minutes or an hour. Uh, depending on uh, well, which simplified battery would be used in that case. I don't know if it varies in between the batteries on your max absorption, but I'm sure there's on, on some of your spec sheets there uh, for that. So we can control that as well. Yep. And yeah, exactly. And it, it, it does seem to vary uh, <laughs> from day to day. So <laughs> adjustable is good. All right. Uh, not to derail, but I, I will be remiss if I don't ask this question. One of our employees has a question here that they wanted to ask, uh, not related to product we went over, but related to a Victron product. Um, I got to ask it because we do recommend this product a lot, uh, you know, as long as, as well as some other products of yours. Um, the question is around the battery protection, uh, or the smart battery protect uh, product. Mm -hmm. And the uh, employee is basically asking, is this a viable solution for the simplified battery? Let's say maybe if we're talking 48 volts, we wanted our battery to uh, have a low battery disconnect of let's say 50.2. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that programmable to that kind of uh, set point? Do you want me to take this, Alan? Yeah, please do, sir. Um, yeah, so we can set the, well, let's call it on-off voltage. A, a battery protect is a, non bidirectional on off uh, switch so to speak so it would be designed for your well, dc loads or to control a, a charger it's not designed to be in conjunction with any inverter 
because um, there's capacitors in that one. But uh, for turning off low voltage situations, you can do that. Um, you can just set it to you know 50. Uh, 50.2 volts, for example. And at that point, it would terminate all the loads connected to the output of it. So you basically just intercept the connection from the battery and cut it off at that point of time. And uh, um, yeah, I believe the 48, we only have one size, which is 100 amp continuous and 250 amp for 30 seconds for a peak. Um, so yes, that would be uh, one of the ways. Um, also, if we want to control something, we can do do that. Um, let's say uh, it's a smart third relay. party, yeah, so a third party uh, charge controller, for example, that we can't control. Then we can uh, set the uh, max value on it and use it as a charge relay instead, and uh, uh, terminate it based on that. You know, high voltage, uh, for example. Uh, so we can you can use it in quite a, a variety of different ways. Um, it's got is that is that uh, so using it with a uh, various product? So let's say like a charge controller, third party. Uh, is that kind of disconnected by a twelve volt relay? Is that the idea? No, uh, it would. Well, our <laughs> sorry, it would be a the the voltage on on the battery generally. But uh, what, there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. We can energize a pin, or we can uh, we have a remote. Phoenix connector on it, which is just a bridge of a, of a, a loop, so to speak. So it's just a wire that goes from one sure. to the other. Uh, we can intercept that and uh, have it any type of relay, um, like the one we have in the back of the battery monitor, for example, intercept that and be acted as a, well, an automatic toggle switch. And then we can program the, uh, um, well, let's, in this case, the battery monitor to turn it off based on state of charge or temperature. Uh, uh, if we have a temp sensor on the system there as well. So, um, yeah, uh, awesome. yeah, just a simple relay, then you can, whatever you can tell that relay to, to do, then yeah, you can use that to control the battery protect. Perfect. And Simon, I have one other question around that um, battery protect device. If somebody had a 48 volt battery and they had 12 volt DC loads, could they use a converter downstream of the battery protect? Uh, yes, and uh, there's this depends on what kind of DC to DC uh, converter they have. A lot of DC to DC converters have remote inputs, so you can turn the 12 volt loads on and off with a toggle switch. And if you have that, then you can wire in a, a, a relay to that one and just turn the DC to DC off instead of a battery protect. If you're going downstream, then depending on the system voltage, uh, it would be better to put it closer to the battery because higher voltage is less current. So that's easier for the component and then have the battery protect in between the battery and the DC to DC converter. Uh, but if the loads on the output at 12 volt, for example, is much smaller than what we could potentially have on the 48 volt size, if we have just small DC to DC load, it might be more cost effective to intercept it uh, in between the DC to DC and the well, the fuse blocks or or so at that point of time. So uh, I would say that which side you're going on depends on the cost because they're doing the same thing there uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, well what's feasible uh, within the range of their continuous operation. Awesome. All right. Well, it looks like we're just right there on the cusp of time here. So. Uh, and, and it looks like we got most. Oh, there's all right, one more question. <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Um, and that's, can the buck boost uh, reduce, reduce their size for mobile usage? Compare with Orion. Um, what do you mean with yeah, I'm a little confused. Uh, size? Are we, Tyler, are we talking about footprint real estate here? Or are we talking about output current? We'll, we'll sit here for a second and see if that comes through. Um, while we're waiting to kind of just wrap that last question up, uh, I saw a few questions again about uh, recording and slides. Um, it will be going out with the follow-up. The slides will go out and there'll be a link to the recording as well, as well as um, we'll, we'll be sure to include Victron's information and our information for reach out. It looks like the answer came through. From yeah, Taylor. Tyler. Yeah. Uh, so Taylor, uh, yeah, the footprint uh, will be smaller with, uh, an equal size uh, Orion or 
I'm sorry, um, buck boost versus uh, multiple Orions. Let's say you want to produce uh, 100 amps from your alternator, then one of the 100 amp uh, buck boosts would have a smaller footprint and uh, well, less uh, cable management than what well, three 30 amps uh, would of the Orion DC to DC would have. Uh, you would have less wiring as well. And this would be one of the situations where a buck boost could be uh, of interest. So real estate, if you're getting up in current, would, uh, would benefit the buck boost uh, quite a lot as well as cable management. Awesome. All right. Well, I think if you have any more questions, you know, the follow-up will come out. Uh, feel free to contact, uh, you know, both Victron and, our, and here at Simplify. Um, we're happy to help out. I just want to give a big thanks to Simon and Alan. Uh, I really appreciate you hopping on. And, and really, I, I do think we hit on some topics that come up day to day um, and really gave some, some solid solutions and answers. So, Alan, Simon, I really appreciate your time today. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Troy and Matt, for having us. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for attending. Um, and again, follow up will we'll shortly follow, hopefully sometime this week. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.